today for two reasons. Number one, Elvis Presley, Presley sang it. And you will hear that I am a huge Elvis fan. And number two, I feel like we can all relate to that song. We will all have to cross troubled waters. Many of us have already had to cross them, and many of us are crossing them right now. I want to tell you a little bit about my story. I'm what you could call a born performer. <laughs> the nurses commented on my unusually strong and very, very loud lungs the night I was born. By the time I could walk, I was performing nightly shows at my house. It would be years before my parents could watch TV again. <laughs> At the age of five, my dad took me to an Elvis tribute concert. I was wearing an Elvis jumpsuit because what else would you wear to an Elvis concert? <laughs> It was at that concert where people started asking me to perform at events. So in one month, I was performing publicly. In three months, I was in Las Vegas performing in front of thousands. And in one year, I was on national television. It was all happening very fast. I was considered one of the fastest growing child performers in America. I love performing, and I get to travel all over the country. You're probably wondering, what did I do? Well, I sang, I danced, I played the guitar and piano. That was like a one-man show. I performed, <laughs> I performed anything from Elvis and Johnny Cash to Bruno Mars and Adele. One of my favorite performances that I remember, I was on a cruise ship singing jailhouse rock on top of a piano. Oh yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Another amazing performance I remember, I was on the Wendy Williams television show singing Johnny Cash. That was an amazing experience. I also got to perform for many charities. My family and I decided any money that we made from performing went to charity. There's even an article in the National Enquirer about the opportunity I had to perform and raise money for charity at such a young age. Though I was young, I felt like this was the path I was meant to be on. Performing in music was just a part of me. But then, everything changed almost overnight. My family and I were about to go through some troubled waters. It was a series of unfortunate and, of course, unexpected events that would change everything. My dad's company would disappear almost overnight 
because of an earthquake in Japan. The stress and the shock would leave him suffering through many small strokes. And my mom began to get very sick too. Everything stopped, including my music. It, it, we were losing everything from our house to my parents' health and my music. I began to withdraw from the passion and love I had for performing and music. It was like the music stopped inside of me. I couldn't even bring myself to touch the, t the guitar or piano. I stopped singing. I began to lose the skills I worked so hard on. I was losing my dream. At eight years old, I was afraid that I would never accomplish anything greater than I already had. As I watched my parents recover from their own challenges, I knew I could too. Whenever I was worried or I didn't know what I was going to do, my mom would always tell me, if you find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead anywhere. My family and I began to pray more than ever, and our faith grew stronger. I don't know why, but one day, I asked my dad to take me to play tennis. When I hit the first ball, he said, I smelled for the first time in a while. I played every day after that with as much dedication and passion as I had with music. I see now that tennis was a gift that would be a bridge for me. Though the path seemed to change, my dreams were not gone. It just led me to a new dream, to play tennis and train at IMG Academy, <laughs> the greatest sports academy in the world. We made it here. And something incredible happened. My music came back. Now, when people ask me, will I play tennis or will I play music? I say, they both go together. I can't have one without the other. I see now, if my family and I never went through some of those obstacles, I would have never reached some of the best times of my life. Just like Jonathan Lockwood Huey says, the darkest night often leads to the brightest tomorrow. Now, I want to tell you what I learned going through those obstacles. I call them the four B's. Number one, be positive. Don't let negative thoughts or worries steal your dreams. Sometimes when, I'll think, when I think I'll never get back what I lost in music, or I'm too small to hit the ball the way I want in tennis. Instead, I think how far my family and I have come. Number two, be grateful. Every night before I go to bed, I get on my knees and I pray to God about the things I'm grateful for. One of the things I was grateful for last night is the opportunity I have to do this TED Talk with you. I can always find things to be grateful for, just like my favorite cartoon character, SpongeBob SquarePants says, Oh, I got a whole new attitude, a lifetime subscription of gratitude. Friend, you gotta change your latitude with an attitude of gratitude. Yes, SpongeBob is very, very wise. <laughs> Number three, be a scrapper. Some of the coaches, including Mr. Boletari, call me a scrapper when I'm on the tennis court. I didn't know what that meant at first, so I looked it up. I found out it means full fighting spirit, a fierce competitor, a warrior, a survivor. So even off the court, I try to be scrappy and never give up, no matter how big the obstacles. So be scrappy and keep fighting the good fight. Don't 
Don't let obstacles build a wall and stop you. Let them build a bridge and it might just lead you somewhere amazing. Number four, be giving. One of the reasons I love performing so much is because I had a way to help others. I learned that it really doesn't matter what talent you have, what you're good at, how much money you have or don't have. What really matters is how you can help others with what you do have. <coughs> There's scripture that says, to whom much is given, much is required. And I'm grateful that I do have something to give. If it's just my time, a song, or even just a smile to someone. I want to leave you with one more song today. It's called Everything. It's an original I helped to write for the 10th anniversary of 9-11. I had no idea how much this song would mean to, you, mean to me today, so I hope you like it. And thank you for letting me share.
Thank you.